Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Mokonaman at YouTube with a, another Q&A session. Thank you very much for the questions that you have submitted. We will be getting in through this video. A very quick update. For the past couple of months, the state and city that I live in has been plunged in another COVID related lockdown. And I've had to spend some time away from the workshop as well as here. I've uh, taken a temporary toolkit to another location and built quite a few models and experimented with uh, wireless battery powered airbrushing and made some content about that which is slowly cycling through the channel. After a few uploads that will finish and we'll go back to usual programming on this channel. I hope that is uh, enjoyable. We're getting a bit heavy on the 3D printing side of things, which we'll get to at the end of the video. Events wise, promised earlier on the year has all been canceled, unfortunately. And during a lot of that time, my hobby shop has almost been inactive and non-trading for almost uh, the second entire second half of the financial year. Though it's uh, not all dim and gloom, I've managed to keep a couple of shifts at work to pay the bills and survive and spent as much time as I can on getting the channel in order, making new content and polishing my video making skills a bit, a bit of uh, planning and 3D design. I know this pandemic can be very hard on uh, many of you, especially if you have kids, other responsibility or maintaining a household. Though the best that we can do is at least dedicate a little bit of time, regardless of how tired, stress or whatnot, to your hobby and just use it as a bit of an escape or uh, a mental refresher. Even if we're attempting a very basic project, a new project, or just going through the motions to produce something. As long as uh, we're sort of holding in there and uh, staying at the course, it can be far too easy to get into a habit of staying up very late, scrolling through social media and not really progressing. Even if you have to sit yourself down and try to uh, inspire and push yourself into something, you will, with a bit of music and a calm state of mind, uh, progress through something, assuming that you've got a space, even a tiny corner of a table and a kit that you can set up rapidly. A bit of strategy. For those with ample time and space and resources, being quite uh, productive, creative and putting out as much content as possible, especially on the social media, is very uh, refreshing and doesn't get you into some sort of mental loop. I think we need to be more positive and share more creative uh, pursuits and improving in those circles to lighten the whole mood where the world is in a bit of a damper. All of that uh, said and done and out of the way, let's get into the video. Gotten really heavily into 3D drafting at the moment. This is for a commission to make some P Bandai weapons for a customer so they can paint it and apply it to their own kits. And here is a Dowage Tomahawk and Gelgoog missile launcher in 1 to 1 44 scale, part of my business the salt mine hobby shop all produced on the anycubic mono x a video about this will be uh next week the danru we're seeing resin garage kits take off in japan but is there a community like that in australia and why do you think it's a bit more of a niche obscure hobby outside of japan the rise of 3D printing could see garage kits become more common and popular. Excellent question. Now, I assume when you're talking about garage kits, it's the Japanese pop culture themed ones, which go into three categories, uh, anime character figures, uh, the mecha genre, Gundams and everything in between, and the lesser known monster kaiju thing, uh, guys in rubber suits, the Power Rangers, Godzilla, older subjects. 
what I'm aware of, there are modelers in Australia who build GK and the gallery has displayed this on the E2046 website and events such as Model Expo, club displays and whatnot. Uh, some clubs do have people who build occasional GK uh, kits or almost exclusively, but they've never really gotten together in a community or communicated. Some may be friends and I've uh, met a few of them and uh, talked to them, uh, sold things to them as a uh, hobby shop, but uh, they've never really connected. And besides a few who show off works on general modeling groups or their own uh, personal social media, generally do not interact with uh, GK or garage kit communities. It's a bit heavily gatekept and there's quite a few controversial uh, arguments that divide the communities of recasts versus acquiring original kits. And uh, these uh, debates generally uh, do not allow for GK modelers to sit down and share resources and uh, congregate as a group. The few that exist, and there are very few GK modelers due to the high uh, price of uh, entry, are in very secretive groups, which I happen to be a member of a few of them, and there's a bit of a high bar to get in. Not necessarily quality of work, but uh, the agreement to abide by a code of uh, decency not to debate or argue or attack other modelers and being semi-active, uh, uh, showing interest that you wish to learn or at least if you've had a history of building a few kits. I find the GK community or the secretive ones that are uh, very uh, decent and highly uh, talented are more dominated uh, by women and generally they're very skilled and the quality of work is uh, very high. This is mostly the figurative stuff, anime figures. The way with uh, the mecha subjects, they generally fall into the more advanced uh, caliber of the general Gunpla and Gundam modeling communities. And they just show their work off with uh, your general snap kits and or whatnot. And the last one, uh, Monsters, Kaiju, Godzilla, very, very rare you see work coming out of that section. They normally congregate to vintage toy or vintage modeling group or uh, elderly uh, people who are uh, modelers. And they just show that off with uh, vintage ethics models or older glue to get together kits. Now, the high entry of getting into garage kit modeling is not necessarily that the kits are expensive and they do generally are far more expensive than your plastic kit counterparts though they're more scarce and hard to come by in the market also mostly due to that there's not really a demand for them you don't see any businesses or stores in the west that are exclusively or deal mostly in garage kits uh, some specialty hobby shops may carry a very small range and that would be less than 1% of their entire catalogue of stock to sell. Uh, mostly older stuff that may have been sitting around for decades and decades and hasn't sold as uh, dead stock. There is a resurgence of garage kit modelling uh, mostly coming out of China and Hong Kong and that is through uh, recasters. The technology of recasting resin has made it uh, cheaper, more available in smaller uh, bulk and you are able to purchase and build and paint them from dealers such as GK Kits and E2046. E2046 is probably a decent community to get started with as it is a recast community as the sponsoring company are uh, recasters. You'll see quite a bit of resources of finished kits, uh, competitions a couple of times a year and uh, modelers that are sponsored to create tutorials or work in progresses to see their process in building and painting. I find uh, this community to be generally decent enough and uh, supportive. It doesn't get uh, too nasty, but it's mostly due to being heavily moderated.
with 3D printing, 3D printing has not really joined the garage kit community. Uh, the garage kit communities are mostly sticking to purely cast kits that you buy, trim up, sand and paint. Uh, 3D printing communities are completely separate where people buy a machine and they talk about uh, tuning it, getting it started, acquiring models and once you get through the whole skill gap of uh, getting your machine to work and prevent failed prints and source decent models then you see people printing models then painting them up it's a community that's still in its infancy it's uh, mostly positive though senior members of the 3d printing communities can be very narky in helping uh, beginners who are going through very common uh, mistakes or issues with their machines and uh, the amount of work or the diversity of work is very very wide across many different subjects that can be found across all sorts of different uh, websites the GK groups I'm a part of are mostly tolerant of uh, figures that are of the right uh, genre and scale to be displayed with GK models and an excellent community to mention is the 3D printed Gumpla community that is focusing on making parts or cover detail for existing plastic kits known as cover kits you get an existing Gundam kit you get additional parts you stick them on new weapon and it's either more detailed or a variant that's not available in plastic people are producing this uh, for uh, to sell their 3d models online or to sell them as outright garage kits and it's a, a very exciting time to see how 3d printed gunpla is going to shape and form and grows its all own community a lot of exciting things are happening there at the moment and even in the past month I've been uh, more involved I will be interested to see if there's going to be an anime figure uh, 3d printing community I know that uh, Wargaming Miniatures have uh, embraced 3D printing quite a bit, though they're also divided in communities that support Games Workshop or the main brands and communities generally going their own way. So the answer is very complicated, it's a bit uh, segmented, there's a lot of things going on, you're probably best joining a very niche group that targets your exact interest and generally just doing whatever you like. Uh, one of the things I thoroughly enjoyed was making the one-to-one -one scale Eevee and I would be interested in making more 3D Pokemon though I'm not really seeing many other doing similar excluding uh, general 3D printing groups. Gerardo Marker how effective is the mix of superglue and baby powder, known as talcum powder, as a filler? This is a very old-fashioned technique uh, dating back easily from the 60s, 70s, where hobby products didn't have a prepackaged uh, primer or all of these wonderful weathering, filling and priming products that we have available to us today most jobs would be required to be fulfilled with whatever you can find around the household or from a hardware store auto store and uh, back in the old days of modeling you would subscribe to magazines or mailing lists or whatnot where these topics would be uh, shared in articles and people would able to uh, submit things to the magazines uh, such as hobby tips or their own uh, built models and this kept going on through to the 90s to the early 2000s until it mostly died out due to the rise of internet forums uh, hobby um, manufacturers putting out all products required to build a kit so money is uh, funneled to them and the death of the uh, hobby magazine I think fine scale model is the uh, final one out there but it is a very effective method of uh, filling however there is a bit of uh, mucking around in setting it up doing the mix and application it's not the neatest process and it's maybe not as good as some of the more effective paddy pro products out there I would recommend trying it out of absolute curiosity but as a good example if you mix talc um, baking soda or bicarb onto superglue 
it's an accelerant and immediately dries hard. If you put a bit of super glue into uh, the gap or uh, connecting point and then add the talcum powder and mix it around a bit, it's going to add as a bulk and dry a bit slower. And as it's drying, it gives you a chance to uh, ram it into the gap that you're filling and sanding it at a later stage. Shoot me, known as K scale models, check out his site and hobby store for online digital models for 3D printing. Been using Tamiya paints for years, but for Gumpla, I am finding the lack of reds, yellows, oranges to be a bit limited. Any good suggestions for a range of acrylics that don't just do military colors? Thanks. Alcohol acrylics, a line of paint that's been with us in the hobby community for a very long time and something we've all uh, used or initially bought from the hobby shop uh, entering in the hobby, non-toxic, low odour and it's supposedly flexible enough that you can um, airbrush, spray paint, hand paint, however you want. I personally find it to be uh, mediocre at everything and it's not brilliant or specialised in any one thing besides the convenience of small jars and how well the pigments are matched and mixed for the exact subject you happen to be painting. Tamiya has a very isolated range, mostly revolved around the subjects they mostly uh, put out and build. German armour, Japanese armour, a few ships, bits and pieces, and basic primary colours to uh, mix yourself if you need a wider uh, variety of colours. Though, in the same uh, vein of alcohol-based paints, there is also Mr. Hobby or the uh, Gunzi Aquarius range. Chemically, it's generally the same. You can interchange both thinners. They both can thin with uh, isopropic alcohol or methylated spirits. They're very compatible, but the paint range is far wider and bigger with uh, a general paint range across all sorts of uh, different topics, including a few fleshes for figure painters, more vibrant colors, some car colors, and a wider military drab range uh, plus a couple of uh, pastelish colors at the moment uh, funny enough that you are asking this question i am working on a complete guide to painting uh, gunzi aquarius range colors uh, reviewing everything from black the military colors the base colors and candies and whatnot and a few tips of uh what extent you can uh, thin it, hand painting it, airbrushing it, and the whole range of chemicals you can use to uh, thin it at a budget. I'll also work on a Tamiya version at a later date. I've got a lot of these old paints uh, sitting around when I was modeling away from the uh, workshop. I'm going to throw these videos together, use up as much of my acrylic uh, stock as I do and once they run out I think I'm going to dust my hands and uh, not deal with uh, alcohol acrylics. I'm not saying that it's a terrible paint it's just not quite my cup of tea it's not uh, what I like to use it's very convenient due to its non-toxicity and uh, low odor but being in this uh, garage uh, lacquers and enamels is uh, what seems to be a good fit for me uh, right now. Quick plug K-Scale Models is a UK small business that designs aftermarket parts and whole kits for 3D printing and uh, also sells the printed kits and models in itself. Put a link down below. Very worthwhile checking out. I think it's very important in this new hobby revolution of 3D printing and the new rise of garage kits through 3D printing should be supported. If you feel inclined and love the subjects that are being offered, uh, take a look and uh, support if you feel like it, or if you really want the model, more importantly. GJ Carr, question, regards paint. Paint first or paint when some parts are together? I just get confused on what order I should do things in. I do planes in cars and tanks. Also, decals, what is the best method for placement? Sorry if they are dumb. Questions. 
But I think that's the issue we deal with all the time. This is a pretty brilliant and excellent yet advanced question. It's a question I have answered multiple times in this Q&A series and a question I'm happy to answer every time. My answer has, may, has been a bit different over the years yet again. In short, there is uh, no clear answer of paint then assemble or assemble then paint. My main aim is always to do some sub-assembly where the colors match or it's appropriate or easy to do so. Paint the pieces, then do a final assembly. Some very tricky models you may need to paint, do a bit of assembling, paint some more and finish assembling, even doing uh, touch-ups. But each style of model manufacturer has its own call. You've mentioned that you built everything uh, from cars, tanks and whatnot. And you know with a car with all the clear bits, you would paint the shell, you would paint the internal bits and then you would assemble, maybe even touch up and do a clear on top of that. And with a tank, you can actually almost assemble the entire thing and paint it. Maybe keep the wheels and tracks separate for the very large scales and for the smaller scale 70 second tanks, I'm almost inclined to just paint the whole thing with the uh, turret off, hand paint it and uh, call it a day. With uh, experience and the more builds you do, the more comfortable you are as you're building the kit and analyzing the kit, what stages you are going to be painting and priming and doing the final assembly. What I do like to do is apply a bit of pinning. I think it's important for all scale modelers to have a pin vise, drill bits and rods where further assembly or the ability of pulling apart would give you greater flexibility and have a whole range of adhesives uh, post painting as plastic cement doesn't quite work in bonding parts together and strong solvent based glues like two part epoxy and even super glue may stain or warp the paint. I like using PVA or wood glue to glue some components together post painting and it just uh, holds together well. If you wish to learn more about the process of building and painting, following an old fashioned work in progress or whole process of someone doing a uh, build and paint, video form, old uh, forums from uh, yesteryear or any way that you can consume model building today, or we all go on social media and it just links out to websites, photo galleries or whatnot and consumers many different methods and takes that modelers do to uh, build and paint their models. I've uh, tried to put my thought process behind this as much as I can in my builds and in the Let's Build series playlist of my channel I have a couple of very long running videos where I spend a good 45 minutes hour, hour and a half explaining in great detail of the whole thought process and where I planned to build, what to glue together, what to paint and what to glue post painting or even if it just works to snap fit and leave as. It's very personal to each modeler and with as many different modelers as there are out there, there's uh, different processes how to do it. And there's no real right or wrong way really, but what makes sense to you most importantly. Stadol Benson. Hey, what kind of man? How old were you when you started the plastic model hobby? I was 19 when I started. I do like to keep a little bit of uh, privacy and won't say exactly how old I was at uh, what year and what current age is. I have started probably my first kit somewhere in the very late 90s where I found a few models that belonged to my father that he uh, never finished for what reason in the attic and had to go with it with basic stuff around the house post paint glues. I did enjoy things like Lego painting, sculpting with clay, playing with slime, all, all the normal stuff kid of the 90s would do and uh, modeling was just super attractive to any other construction or snap fit, bolt on, electrical, wire up toy that was available on the market. Now I've got a couple of photos and this is for a later project. Uh, there's one here of me working with a bunch of uh, friends on some Warhammer. This photo was taken somewhere in 2005, bit of a sleepover, small fridge, uh, 
big CTR TV, watching some old school anime and painting Warhammer. It's a very edgy stage of my life, early to middle high school, uh, roughly. And uh, here's another picture of one of my, uh, <laughs> it's a bit cringy. Walker, Mech Walker, fuck, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, Mech Walker from uh, Warhammer 40k for Katachin armor. And it's been uh, hand painted in God knows what acrylics, maybe a mix of Citadel of the time and Tamir with very heavy glazing of uh, sludge washes and uh, no concept of top coating or how to matte fit or whatever. A bit creative, very cool. I still have the model floating around somewhere, but it's just nice to revisit this and I probably got into Gundam modeling or had my first Gundam around 2005 and didn't get more involved around 2007 2008 and that stage I've started lurking internet forums and uh, making very basic content for things like uh, Yahoo Google groups uh, MSN Messenger, Pixo, host your own uh, dodgy website, and eventually uh, 2009, my first YouTube video. Uh, doing a big uh, backup of all of my uh, data I've acquired on external hard drives and hard drives throughout my life and sorting uh, things out. Last year during the pandemic, I found a whole treasure trove and wealth of all the different models and work in progresses for those uh, models dating back as 2004 to 2011, 2012. And I think I'm going to do a video showcasing of all the different interesting models that have been lost to the internet in the closure of uh, servers and forums and picture hosting and uh, whatnot. My thought process and style of modeling back then. And I've got a couple of work in progresses of a few models that I've built and a scratch build leading up to YouTube that can be their own standalone uh, model builds. The photos are going to be a bit uh, dodgy, grainy, low resolution with uh, cheaper digital cameras of the time. And some of uh, the earliest photos are uh, film or Polaroids or uh, whatever. So it'd be very fun to explore. I've uh, put a survey out if you guys would be interested and you said yes and it is a project I will work uh, before the end of the year to have two videos about my past. Uh, why not? Let's take a quick break. My 3D printer has uh, just turned off and we can have a look at some of the weapons that I have drafted. This is a commission build of a bunch of 1 to 144 scale weapons, shields, and uh, bits and pieces that I've designed and printed. These are the test pieces that I'll keep for myself. And the next run, I'm going to post out to the client. So these have been uh, a lot of fun straight from my uh, Photon Model X. I look forward to a video about that next week. Mito Takatori. Nice video, mate. Just wanting to ask, what PSI and needle do you use for the Zurich Flat Clear? I've got almost every type of compressor, airbrush, needle nozzle configuration, and playing with everything. Uh, and I'm meaning to do this with a new Honey Your Airbrush Skills video, which I haven't done for a little while. I always like to use a 0.5 mil as a workhorse for priming, uh, base coating, and top coating at a low PSI anywhere between 11 to 15. It could be as low as 9, very rare occasions, uh, a higher PSI for a, a gloss coat or something like that. Recently using a battery powered uh, airbrush I've only been used to spraying 0.3 at a low PSI and it was tricky to work with at first but I've got the hang of it. And the trick with the 0.5 is a lot of people find that has a heavy flow and it releases way too much paint. You just need to rock that trigger and not pull it all the way back. Just a slight amount and get that perfect distance to spray to movement ratio and you're good to go. What I always love about the 0.5 uh, needle is when it time, comes time to clean, 
you rock that trigger all the way back and regardless of what uh, lint or junk is in the nozzle it's going to blast it straight out and your airbrush is nice and clean and ready for the next color medium or thinner that you're going to flush right through it. Uh, I would only pull out the 0.2 or 0.3 mil airbrushes if I'm doing some finer shading or uh, line work freehand camouflage but that's generally a rarity. Benching again, what do you like the best between enamel and lacquer paint? I've heard a term recently from a hobbyist Uncle Les that I uh, deeply admire and respect and he says that he is a paint agnostic. He does not believe in any particular paint and will use anything on hand and I'm very similar. However, when it comes to buying paint at the checkout and ha handing over my hard-earned cash, there is definitely preferences. My favorite all-time paint to airbrush with is uh, lacquers. It's very easy to atomize, add thinner, and it's just somehow makes sense and works for me. I have the appropriate workspace to deal with all the uh, fumes and the downsides of it. I find it has a lovely uh, luster and there's a lot of colors available to me. I'm going to be bailing out in hobby colors and focusing mostly on camera was out of focus. I'm going to focus mostly on automotive paints or paint to the custom mixed for me and mixing my own colors from primary sources and uh, base colors. It's as cheap as uh, 250 mil for about uh, 20, 30 US dollars and thinner is as cheap as chips. Uh, that's not going to be a problem for me uh, any longer ex except for a few specialist colors. I will be learning how to blend clear paints to make uh, candy coats or clear blacks, reds, whatever. And uh, pearlescents, which I love, you can just get all sorts of uh, funky pigment and uh, bind it and paint it. So learning to make my own paint is going to be uh, very exciting and challenging, which I will share on this channel. When it comes to hand painting, and generally I hand paint with lacquers because I can make it work. But my all-time favorite paint to hand paint with is enamels. It's slow to dry, and you can actually control it quite a bit by putting in a dry thinner, uh, such as uh, mineral thinner, and it evaporates immediately. It's a bit like a Zippo lighter fluid, or uh, some of the uh, pigment fixatives you get from uh, Hobby Lines. And you can get uh, thinners that dry very slowly. It's almost like a leveling thinner, but it's super cheap. And it's generally the greasiest turpentine you can get your hands on. And one that's available in Australia, at least, is gum turpentine. And that just takes forever to dry. It's very, very greasy, and it leaves almost a slight gloss luster sheen to it. And it has almost a natural uh, fragrance of uh, eucalyptus leaves uh, to it, with its obvious uh, pungent uh, oil-based odor. Don't know what, I just like it. Enamels are my second favorite paint to airbrush. I generally don't use it too much because it takes so long to dry if masking is involved. And that's where lacquers has the far advantage over it. And the two are not exactly compatible applying on top of each other. You'll get crackles and cracks and whatnot. A final uh, decal placement. Generally, after I've done the majority of my painting, and if I feel the need, a gloss coat, uh, and it's sufficiently dried and hardened, I'll uh, soak the decals in water, uh, apply them, and I put a decal set on top. If there's a little bit of damage, wrinkling, or a heavy outline, the decal's very thick, it's just not quite sitting on the model right, or it doesn't look right, I'll use a decal set. The decal applies on and it looks perfect and flat, you know, how it lies, let it lie. Seal it with a gloss coat when it's thoroughly dry to the touch. And uh, you've got a sealed decal. Now if you're applying a lot of decals and you're worried that you want to handle the model and not interrupt other decals or tear decals as you're placing more decals, especially decals on top of decals, I like to apply a few decals, let it dry, gloss coat, let that dry, a few
few more decals. If you're doing an Atasha scheme or something with a thousand decals on it, it could be many sessions of decal clear coat dry, decal clear coat dry until you get your uh, finished result. But uh, it's going to be ideal placement, no damage, no issues, no silvering, and uh, you're practically winning at that point. This concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, until next time, stay tuned for more content, a uh, bit more time dedicated to the outro. In the description section of every video, including this one, we have links to all the different social medias where I share uh, my videos. It seems that uh, YouTube does not really promote or put videos on the dashboard of uh, YouTube where you log in and uh, it's not really uh, tracking in the way of uh, people uh, discovering me. Uh, by following other social media accounts, only if you do really wish to see my new content, you will uh, get more reliable uh, updates. This is across uh, Facebook pages, uh, Twitter, and uh, recently started posting on Instagram. I'm not much of a smartphone user or a tablet user, but I found that I can finally put our posts on there through the Facebook uh, business app or uh, window that they've uh, recently updated. It might be worth uh, exploring for others who maintain channels and uh, social media uh, outlets. As well as uh, videos, which once a video is made, it could take up to a month until it's uh, uploaded, time to edit and process a video. The photos and work in progress as they do go up is what I'm actively working on at the moment. Uh, plus uh, any interesting resources that happen to be shared. I have the Salt Mine Hobby Shop for those who live in Australia and that just updates new tools, products and bits and pieces that we're selling if you feel inclined in supporting or want something a bit spicy or interesting for the hobby. Uh, that covers about everything. I'm always happy to answer questions and help you out, not just during these uh, Q&A sessions where we can have a bit of a chat to and forward. If you leave a comment in the form of a question or send me a question across any of the social medias, uh, private message as well, I'm more than happy to help out and have a look at your project and uh, just help along. See you later. And thank you very much for staying tuned all the way to the end. You yeah, have a good one.